Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. Well guys, I have to say today was an emotional roller coaster in the world of New World. I woke up this morning, tried the new event, and to be honest, I was left with a real feeling of sadness. I actually contemplated walking away for a moment. It gave me this weird empty feeling if you know what I mean. Like, is this really the end? Then, I went out for coffee and did some other work, and came home to the latest New World dev blog, and everything changed. It felt like the first time I saw the game announced again. I can't even describe it. Every word that came out of their mouths made me feel more excited and happy, and just full of hope for the future. And I think after seeing this, you will agree. This is not copium, this is awesome. And there are a few reasons I feel this way. So, let's just get into it. So the first thing they announced was they are changing New World to have season passes. This to me is very good and very exciting for a couple of reasons. For one, it adds a financial incentive to the game, making AGS more money, which leads to better content, it's just a win-win. But also it provides a much more organized release schedule for new content. We know what to expect when, we can start getting excited without being disappointed as the new seasons approach. So, what will these new seasons look like? Well first, to answer the question I know everyone will have, it will have two tracks, a free and a premium. The premium costing 20k marks a fortune. The nice thing though is, no content included in the season will be paywalled. The only thing that's affected is the reward tracks. But the free tracks will be good. They will include skins, marks of fortune, all sorts of amazing rewards. But the big difference will be the paid version will simply get more of the same rewards. And some of the skins and stuff like that will have cooler effects like fire. I mean, that's to be expected, it is paid. The very best part of this model is that players will feel rewarded for playing the game instead of feeling empty and bored and lacking direction. So, everything about this for me is a win. But to make this even better, along with this, they showed a whole new roadmap, which is around this new season pass system. And man, it looks so much better than the one we got earlier this year. I wish they could have announced this earlier, but it probably was still in the works. But before we look at this roadmap, let's talk about the crafting. With each season, they plan to rework crafting to constantly improve it. Some stuff they have slated for Season 1 and 2 that are very exciting are making 2 time first time crafting bonuses now 3 times. Allowing us to craft bags and tools while using stopwatches and golden scarabs now. Huge fishing improvements, making everything more valuable. A complete cooking XP overhaul, making it feel more fantasy cooking instead of making 1000 meals to level. Improvements to Arcana, making the game remember the materials that you last used if you make the same sword in a separate session, so that you don't have to go and reset all the materials again. And so much more amazing stuff. So anyway, let's have a look at the roadmap. So for Season 1, which will come as soon as March, it's called the Fellowship of Fire Season. For this, we'll get an entirely new season story, along with a whole bunch of quests and a whole thing. We'll also get gear set storage finally, a new expedition, the Imperium, a new heart rune, new seasonal and world events, an MSQ update, which is the rework to Brightwood and Weaver's Fen, along with all new quests and mechanics, colored outlines for enemy AoEs and PvP, the balance updates, which we'll get into in a moment, and of course, the season pass. And then for summer, we get season two, because these will work on like a three month rotation. So for summer, we'll get Season 2, Blood of the Sands. This again will come with an entirely new season story along with quests and rewards. The Transmog System. This was an exciting one. The Season Trial, it's a new 10-person battle. The Sandworm Elite Trial, which is the first raid. And with the Sandworm Elite Trial, they did say that this will not be like a Zerg boss. This will be difficult, and you will wipe. And it sounds like it's instanced, or at least locks people out. I don't think you'll be able to do this one with a big Zerg group. It'll be locked to 10. Which will of course come along with raid groups. And another new heart rune. Because they plan to add a new heart rune every season. Which is amazing. Cross world outpost rush coming as soon as summer in this season. Seasonal and world events. Balance updates. And a new season pass. And in season 3, another MSQ update which they haven't really told us about yet. Which will probably be finishing it up. Another perk balance update pass, seasonal and world events, territory influence updates, the season pass stuff, and then if you look beside that you see an expansion with a new story, a zone transformed, a new expedition, mounts, a new weapon, a new heart rune, and a gear score increase. That's very exciting. I don't know about you guys, but the mounts coming as soon as summer and a whole new expansion is going to be amazing. And then for the winter, we're looking at season 4. With a new season story, a season trial with mutators, a new season trinket, an MSQ update, a new expedition, a new heart rune, seasonal and world events, cross world arenas and expeditions guys, seasonal territory control, and a se another season pass. So guys, everything that we've been wanting and we thought was years away, like the cross world arenas and expeditions, or the mounts, or a new zone, it's all coming within the next few months. Pretty exciting guys. Another thing they talked about is this one. Some changes to PvP, which in some ways are also tied to the seasons which you saw on the roadmap. 
So first we are getting the VFX changes to PvP, in the form of different colors to attacks and healing circles, which I know many of us were waiting for. They are also making some huge changes to the OPR. They are making the doors resistant to range attacks, and they are even considering giving them a shield blocking range attacks entirely. Changing how OPR is scored, making it more about capture and control over damage. All the siege equipment will be getting a buff in OPR. It all just sounds really amazing. And as far as the arena, they haven't forgotten about that. They are adding a new arena map. This will rotate with our current map on probably a weekly basis. But it will roughly be the same size, but a completely new layout to change how we fight. They also mentioned that a complete rework to the PvP reward track is coming in Season 1, which will make it beefier, offering much better rewards more consistently with a guaranteed strong one at every 5 tracks. They also are completely reworking the territory game. They have dubbed it Influence Version 2. They are taking the grind out of the Influence game and adding in windows where different zones will be up for attack, and adding in new objectives like towers that will change how you gain influence, and make it all just feel like an event instead of a daily grind. So with all these amazing PvP changes, I bet you're asking about the rebalance. Well, they also touched on that. Well, they also touched on that, and I do think I like it also. Although, it may cost some some coin. First the musket, these are getting a complete rework, making them require a charge sort of thing, to do a ton of damage. You will have to aim, gaining focus to increase your damage. So no more sniping someone down before they get to you. And for the hatchet, well, Defy Death won't be a get out of jail free card anymore. It won't prevent your death. They didn't get specific, but they did say that. We will likely see a change to a fortify buff or some increased armor or something. And finally the greatsword. It's having its honing greatly nerfed to bring it in line with the great axe and the warhammer. So some nice requested changes to hit the weapons. But it's not the end of it, as they said they will be looking at these every season. And the armor. Well, yeah, it's getting completely reworked also. What they are doing is making any perks like shirking fortification or resilience, or anything that adds to your resistance and damage mitigation really, to be greatly less effective on lighter gear. Which might sound bad at first, but really it isn't. The goal is to give each armor type an identity. Tanks should not be wearing light and mutations, it's dumb. Stuff like that. The game has leaned far, far, far too into a meta where everyone's a glass cannon, so it's about time this changed. And guys, with Season 1 they are doing a very first but not last playability pass. What they are doing is focusing on fire mages and completely reworking the fire staff abilities to make the class stronger and more fun and overall a ton more enjoyable to play. So that's going to be exciting. Guys, this is huge. And I can't tell you how excited I actually am for this and the future of New World. What do you guys think? Are you excited for the mounts, the balance changes, the new arena map, or the entire new zone that's coming in the summer? Did this huge announcement hit you off guard? Let me know in the comments. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.